And of course, we want to discuss the police excessive uh, force that they've been using, especially in light of what we went through with the general election. Also, I want to draw your attention on the standard on Sunday, not through the standard, but the Daily Nation. This is the Sunday Nation. Uh, this is the 27th of August, where on page two also we had Professor Nyang Nyongo accusing police of dumping protesters' bodies in Lake Victoria as a sidebar story there. Let me just try and make sure that you can see it clearly. And uh, tucked away there, I know you can't see, but it says that uh, Kisumu Governor Nyang Nyongo and the police have clashed over claims that security officers killed people who protested against the election of President Turu Kenyatta and dumped their bodies in Lake Victoria. Governor Nyongo spoke, uh, that was on Saturday, as a body with two holes in the chest suspected to have been caused by bullets was discovered in the lake and taken to Jeramugi Oginga Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital Mortuary by police. While reports indicate that the body was discovered inside a body bag, policemen who took it to the mortuary recorded the cause of death as drowning. Speaking moments after he assessed the body at the mortuary, the governor said the discovery is a clear indication that the police officers killed protesters and dumped their bodies in the lake while burying others at Mambuleo Cemetery. Of course, we spoke also to Professor Nyang Nyongo on Monday here on This Is A Point, decision 2017. And of course, also he related to that, we'll play that particular clip much, much later in the course of the program. But we just want to continue with our panel this morning. I'm holding court with the Captain Samir Wirunga, who is the CEO of Africa, African Security Studies and uh, Strategic uh, Studies as well. Also do have with us uh, Dr. Oliver Kisaka, who's a chaplain and a lecturer at African International University, Dr. Mustafa Yusuf Ali is a conflict resolution and national security expert, and also Professor Noami Damba, who is the Chancellor of KC University, and also he is an expert on defense and foreign policy. Let's begin with you, Dr. Mustafa, in light of this particular report of the Human Rights Watch and what uh, Professor Nyang Nyongo is saying. And of course, we had also previously uh, news that were circulating that body bags were sent in Kisumu and of course we had uh, the Red Cross coming to the fore and saying uh, they were not associated with that because also them they were embroiled in that particular story but they put forth a press statement certainly denying that uh, there were body bags that were supplied uh, uh, by them. This is now what is coming also to the fore with this particular story that uh, we just read from the Sunday Nation uh, on the 27th where the professor says uh, that he, the bodies have been discovered they were in the body bags and they were riddled with bullets or they had bullet holes. Yeah, Dibal, the, the, the Human Rights Watch report is a serious indictment to the, uh, 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 the police service in this country. Um, uh, first of all, it was very clear that in certain areas in the country there was an overreaction on the part of the police. There was uh, 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 the use of uh, uh, application of excessive force mm -hmm. by the police in the manner that they were trying to contain uh, uh, um, uh, um, protesters or those who were expressing their displeasure with the results that were uh, uh, trickling in. Th that was wrong. And, and, and the fact that there are children that were killed uh, 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 during the election time the police service has got to come out very clean, clearly explain about these deaths. Now, with regard to the bodies that were found dumped in Lake Victoria, um, um, uh, allegedly with the bullet uh, uh, wounds, uh, the police officer that took this body to the mortuary and, and, and declared that this person died of drowning must be investigated. Um, the fact that it was found that there were bullet wounds on the body of uh, that uh, of the of the of the bodies that were discovered in Lake Victoria dumped in body bags uh, uh, means that somebody shot that person, and it'll be very careless of a police officer to just take a body and take to the mortuary and say this person down of drowned without looking at really what uh, 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 happened. It means that. Uh, certain members of the police service are not doing their work uh, properly. But this is a problem uh, that cuts across, uh, uh, um, or, or, or rather we've observed uh, uh, previously, mm -hmm. that some people can just be arrested, 
put in a container and you find this person floating or dumped somewhere in the river, having been killed by the very people that arrested that person. IPOA, uh, uh, in my opinion, should come up very strongly and investigate these killings and uh, uh, make sure that those people that are responsible, the, the, the criminals that are responsible for killing innocent Kenyans are brought to book. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Dr. Kisaka? Let me maybe just um, provide uh, a wider perspective. I think what we are dealing with in this country and um, in about two or about four or five years ago, I made an observation and said, Kenyans got a new constitution, but perhaps we now need new Kenyans. That's right. <laughs> so we, ha we have a document that to a great extent captures the aspirations of the people, <laughs> but the people that sought those aspirations did not recognize that they themselves needed to change in order to be able to demonstrate or activate the new constitution they had given to themselves. I think there are very many gains that have been made as a result of the new constitution. And it must be appreciated that in the journey of coming from a past system that was autocratic and perhaps much more uh, careless, <laughs> We have made gains where if a police officer does something, he actually can be taken to task today. <clears throat> the media can report about it. And various other people can actually uh, take, the, take the person to task. What's happening is that, as they say, corruption is fighting back. <laughs> the, the evil that was entrenched in society previously is still manifesting itself. And whenever it does, unfortunately, and this is why sometimes I don't like talking about issues like these specific ones. Loving families have lost their loved ones. You know, people out there watch Kisaka speaking on TV and they wonder, do I have a heart? Do I understand what that individual family is going through that has lost its child? And so I think all of us on this panel would wish to assure those families that we really don't want to be careless about their situation. Mm -hmm. we, we, we say pole to them and we pray somehow that, that God will comfort them. But, but there must be a consistent commitment to push towards good values. Uh, it, at the break we were talking here about a country of good manners. Mm -hmm. We need good manners in this country. We need to underlay our aspirations with proper ethical values, with mutual respect. Mm -hmm. And the fact that one, two, three, four police officers can give instructions to their juniors to handle uh, people with such brutal force ought to be investigated and corrected. But on the greater part, you can say, and perhaps here Captain Merunga will help us, we have moved a step. It become more open people can be taken greater tasks and Kenyans must continue to push that direction until we do not have a situation like this recurring. Mm -hmm. Right. Captain Virunga. Um <coughs> You know, Dibal, this country was meant to go through some reforms and some of us participated in that process vig vigorously uh, expecting that uh, we shall remove, uh, we shall reform the police. But my argument at that time was, did the police require reformation or it required transformation? Mm -hmm. And people never agreed with me because I was telling them, you can only reform something that has been working, yes, but you want to make it better. But if you need to change it through a paradigm shift, then you must transform that institution. But we, we, we settled on reform knowing very well that our police actually required the transformation. Mm -hmm. So these are the fruits and results of us having embarked on the wrong process of reforming and transforming our police service 
to what we expected it to be within the context of which this country operates. But I also know that political scientists will tell you good governance also sets what they call normative standards. Mm -hmm. Normative standards are standards that you set that should become normal. That when a police kills a Kenyan, that police should be taken to court. Mm -hmm. That when a police misbehaves, then the, 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 the superior of that police officer <coughs> must be held to account. So in any good governance structure in any country, we have to set standards. And they're called normative because you want to make them be normal. Uh, <laughs> you can <ask> this <laughs> there. Yes. So if we have poor <laughs> standards set by the governance structure that we have in a country, it will be very difficult for the institutions created by that government to perform to the expectations of the people of that country. Mm -hmm. And therefore, because we call it a civil police, it responds and works under administrative, political, and executive legis. Mm -hmm. If that is not expecting and demanding accountability, Dibal, we shall continue talking about our police service until one day God will see that this country needs to change. And why am I saying that? Even when that small kid was killed, Pendo, no police officer has been arrested. Or unless I don't read papers, maybe you can assist me the panel. I should have expected that that officer who was responsible for that should have been, certain measures should have been taken within the police service itself, not a poor. Because a poor comes in when they feel the service itself is not responding to what is expected to be the norm. Instead, that, we, see, we see the bodyguard is the one who's being. Uh, that is the <coughs> thing. Yes. So the poor's duty is to come and check why was this not done. So Kenyans must understand it is not the duty of a poor to make the police serve Kenyans well. A poor comes in when things are not seen to be working well. And, and, and therefore, every time we hear there's a girl who was shot in Madare, and now we are hearing of body bags. Uh, uh, while I don't want to prejudge, because we need a postmortem to know exactly where these bodies were coming from, but I think we've gotten to a point where Kenyans are slowly, which is completely wrong, accepting that actually police can kill and walk away. <laughs> that Kenyans are accepting that police can do ABCD. And because nothing will be done, life continues. Mm -hmm. That can only be changed. And Professor is here. When you have a government that has set <coughs> governance structures that are responsible, that demand responsibility, demand accountability, and therefore anybody appointed to a certain position in government must be responsible for the actions of those below them. All right. All right, before we hear from Professor, let's just uh, hear from uh, that particular bite that we had from Professor Nyan Yong on Monday on This Is The Point. But then we sent our people to Mamboleo Cemetery and they found that the previous day some people had been there and had asked that a mass grave be dug. The next day they say that, that mass grave be enlarged, okay? We kept on visiting, but then I think along the way we lost track. Now, when we discovered this body the other day, I asked my people to go back to Mamboleo in the evening at about 6.30. When one of my uh, scouts, and we had opened a rescue and emergency center, Jomo Kenyatta Sports Ground, where we had received 171 complaints of people injured, people were beaten and in the house, they were prayed to come back, sexual assaults and everything. We have recorded that. 171 cases, six people dead. And we have the names. All right, uh, let's hear from Professor Naomi Damba. Your reaction. The bar, uh, here's my reaction. Um, during the colonial days, the colonial government had a certain value with regard to African people. Uh, there were no human beings. They were half people which were supposed to serve the colonial masters at any time, any place, and were told exactly what to do, beaten up any time, locked up without any order. 
We're an independent country since 1963. We have law and order based on our constitution. There has been incredible attempt to reform uh, the police service, like Captain Warunga say. But the issue is, and I, and I, and I really appreciate the, uh, the incredible uh, sometime uh, environment where that police has to work in. Uh, I appreciate that most of them lack uh, continuous training. I appreciate that their mission sometimes are not clear. But the issue is, the national question is, there is no one Kenya which is less than the other. Mm -hmm. And there is no law that say police can come and kick the door and beat up people with rungus instead of l l using law and order uh, uh, procedures. The point, uh, you see riot in Europe and you see riot in America. And with the exception, really exception, one person take a gun, ride, drive over the people. But the, 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 the riot that happened in Germany was a huge riot, okay? And police were spraying water and at most rubber bullet. Now the question, who allow our police? By whose order? Are they allowed to use live bullet <coughs> on innocent people? What was this warranted? Was this the last resort on how they can act? We cannot accept this if we want this country to move forward. We must, like uh, uh, my friend say, not just uh, uh, <coughs> glossy around the real issue. The real issue is we need to hire, hire people who are learned and put them on a continuous law enforcement learning and be able to get rid of thugs out of our police system and be able to use the right instrument mm -hmm. in order to represent where this country need to be right now and the direction we need to, we need to, we right. need to go. Any final reaction on this uh, before we wind up, uh, uh, Captain Runga? Dr. Kisaka, Dr. Mustafa? Yeah, Dibal, it's just that uh, Kenya should <coughs> set the standards. Uh, Kenya is a leader in this part of the world, and Kenya should set the standards uh, across the various institutions, uh, um, uh, uh, government institutions, uh, uh, governance, uh, security, enforcement of laws, uh, 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 sport, across, across the, across the, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, every sector of life and uh, one of the most crucial is, is uh, service that should be offered by police. The police should uh, uh, really, 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 really work to restore its image and they can only do so not by talking but by being seen to be doing the right things. All right. Thank you. I think I just want to buttress what I said about good governance. Um, some of us have involved ourselves in what we call security sector reform. Uh, security sector reform is, is, has been a new phenomenon in governance all over the world. <coughs> and while the UN and the African Union and the European organizations are working seriously on reforming our security sector, I think we must understand that uh, Dibal, and I want to read this, this is what it says about good governance. Uh, the cornerstone of good governance is adherence to the rule of law that is impersonal and impartial application that is stable and has predictable laws, statutes, rules and regulations without regard for social status or political considerations. Mm -hmm. Now, if we set those normative standards and we strictly follow to the latter, then anybody who works within that set structure will behave as per the law. 
what we see in this country is that sometimes we have people who behave like they are operating outside the law. And that is where sometimes we find some members of police service. And when we say some members, it's because we also know the bar that we have very good police officers who feel injured when their fellow police officers misbehave and do what they do. And because they have no voice, they'll keep quiet and the people will say, our police service. I have the opportunity and the privilege to have very many friends in the police service, both at the top, in the middle, and down. And I can assure you, and I can assure the country, we have very good police officers who feel injured when some of the crooked ones do what they are doing. But as I finish, I think I just go back to governance. There's a saying, and uh, I, I don't know where to quote, where they say, you can only determine the level of the country's political maturity when you look at how the police behave. That will tell you where this country is. Because if we can continue living and moving on as if nothing has happened, and yet people are crying of police brutality, they are crying of, uh, people are crying of extrajudicial killings, then also that tells you where we are as a country, and probably we need to sit back and ask ourselves, for how long shall we be talking about impropriety from our police service, yet we have a system of governance that is supposed to be democratic and the people centric and centered. So that is how I close that issue of uh, the killings in this country. Thank you.